Hey everybody, my name is Tessie Wessie and welcome to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. A new series I'm going to be doing on my channel where I review some Switch games. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about Warface, a first-person shooter that released on the Nintendo eShop on February 18th, 2020. As always, it's important to have context. Warface was released originally for the PC back in October of 2013, but then was remastered four times before coming to the handheld console. It was first developed by Crytek, but all of the current and future developments will be handled by Blackwood Games. The first thing I feel like I have to mention before anything else is that Warface is completely free. That being said, please use that as kind of your frame of reference moving forward and make your own conclusion about the game. Don't just take my word for it. Okay, so enough background, it's time to get into the nitty gritty. Other than the game's price tag, it does a lot of things really well. Aside from Overwatch and Fortnite, the Switch doesn't really have a lot of strong FPSs on it, setting this game up to succeed pretty well. It's a casual and pretty fun shooter, and I could see myself spending a lot of hours playing it in the near future. If you're a fan of customization in games, I have great news for you. So in addition to an absolutely deep roster of weapons and attachments to use, you can also customize your player's body armor and their player tag for others to see when you kill them or they even kill you. In addition to customization, an area of this game that really surprised me was its graphics. So often, the Switch, I feel like, gets ragged on by other consoles visually. But to be real with you, this game looks almost as good as CSGO. The game runs unusually smooth during high-intensity scenes, and I haven't noticed it dropped a lot of frames. Something I always notice when I play games on the Switch is that textures in the background are blurry. However, I have not noticed that with this game yet. But I will also note that I've only played it with the Switch docked and not in handheld mode. Within the first five minutes of playing this game, I was told by the AI three separate times just how important movement is in this shooter. That being said, why does a game that hangs its hat on how impressive movement is struggle with it so much? Honestly, I felt like I had cement in my shoes half the time and that it felt way too long to get to where I needed to go. I struggled climbing over walls and ledges and sliding meant that I was an extremely easy target due to the fact that it took forever and a day to get my gun up. Something that's really important to me and I feel like flies under the radar for a lot of people is a game's menu system. If all of your menus look the same and they look ugly, I'm going to hate looking at them. Not only that, but they just felt really unoriginal. Like someone had taken the Dollar General version of Call of Duty's code and just pasted it in there, not caring to edit it or, or what it looks like. They were tough to navigate, and the fact that there's no tutorial for them left me just wandering around aimlessly through the menus till I found what I needed to. I feel like the biggest knack against Warface is the fact that it just tries way too hard to be Call of Duty, similar to games like Dirty Bomb. I know there's only so much liberty that you can take when you're developing a modern military shooter, but come on, if I wanted to play COD, I'd just turn on my PC and not my Nintendo Switch. The game doesn't have controller rumble like a lot of other console shooters, so sometimes I just died because I couldn't tell if I was even hitting an enemy from far away. In order for Warface to be worth investing your precious time in on a system that already has a lot of killer games, things have got to get ugly. They've got to focus on smoothing out some edges instead of trying to sell me a battle pass on a broken game. I would love for gameplay to move faster and for things to actually feel competitive. I didn't feel like much was at stake when I was playing and it made me try a lot less hard. Fixing weapon balance could help a lot as well as I feel like I would just get dusted every time I walked around the corner by someone who had a shotgun. One of the weirdest things about this game in my opinion is just how far you throw grenades. My character felt like he was practically Tom Brady and on top of that, I didn't feel like the grenades did very much damage. Overall, Warface isn't really that bad of a game. I know I was really hard on it, but any game that comes out on the Switch, I expect to be blown away by. If you're looking for a fun couple of hours with your friends, 
or want to try out the FPS genre before you make a $60 commitment, I say go for it. At the end of the day, Warface is free, so you don't have much to lose at all. If I had to give this game an overall rating, I would give it a 5 out of 10. It's not super polished, but it has a lot of room to grow, and as of right now, it's pretty fun for being free. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has been the first ever episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I'm your sheriff, Pimp Boy 3000 Tessie Wessie, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.